cross section from a text from Dr. Meals and Seeger. You can see clearly the dorsal apparatus here in the ring finger. You can see it here in the long finger and here also on the index finger, a little less clear here. But if you simply look at the surface area over which that dorsal apparatus lies, there is a significant amount of contact surface area between the dorsal apparatus and the underlying bone. That means that the likelihood of adherence is relatively great because there is so much contact. And because the dorsal apparatus is a group of interplaying fibers, the entire dorsal apparatus has to move. So one area of adherence will limit motion in the entire dorsal apparatus. Here we look at the dorsal apparatus and its fibers in a photograph of a cadaver, and we can see that the fibers run in multiple directions. And in this cadaveric specimen, we see the empty joint here, and the forceps has list, lifted up the dorsal apparatus, holding on to a vestige of the interosseous muscles that have been resected. You can see that there is a significant area, highlighted here in green, for adherence of one layer to another. Most of all, and particularly in the little finger, one of the reasons that PIP joint extension is so difficult to regain is the fact that most all of us normally hyperextend our MP joints. If you look at cadaver specimens, you'll see articular cartilage well up on the dorsum of the distal end of the metacarpal meaning that our joints are built to allow MP hyperextension. So when the PIP joint has been injured and is stiff, has resistance, and we attempt to extend our finger, the power of the extensor digitorum communis, which normally is transmitted somewhat into the dorsal apparatus, now does with the injured PIP does not do that because of the resistance. So it simply delivers more power at the MP joint for hyperextension. And unfortunately, that reduces the power that's available to extend the PIP joint. It is true that when a metacarpal phalangeal joint is hyperextended, if you just position your MP joint in hyperextension, and you then endeavor to fully extend your PIP joint, you actually have increased the resistance to that PIP extension and made it more difficult. So every time a patient with a stiff PIP joint extends the finger and the MP joint hyperextends, they actually have created a situation where extending the PIP joint is made more difficult. This happens without the patient even thinking. It's a normal response, and the harder the patient tries, the more this imbalance is seen. It's a simple demonstration of the fact that the PIP joint has resistance, the metacarpal phalangeal joint does not, and therefore the power is directed to the loosest joint. The capsular structures, as we discussed, are snug and well-fitting. And in the presence of injury, adherence, and or edema, they're simply not the ability to move. Edema alone fills up all of the extra spaces and makes the ability of those last few degrees of extension very difficult because the edema provides resistance. The same with the capsular structures. If there's edema there or if there's the beginning of adherence, there is resistance to that last bit of extension, which, as we know, is the weaker motion. The PIP joint does not extend easily.
it has an inherent resistance to it at end range that has to do simply with the viscoelastic resting tension of the surrounding soft tissues. We don't rest in full extension. We rest in slight flexion. Mm -hmm.